Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be showing you the features of our Victron Solar Charge Controller which we've been using over the last couple of months is now all connected into the van. If you haven't already seen the unboxing video and where we show you where we bought this solar charge controller we'll put a link to that video just up here, go check that out. Thank you very much for all those people that are tuning in for the first time. This is a part of our Mercedes Sprinter camper conversion series of videos. If you haven't already done so, go check out the other videos. And remember, if you do like these videos, to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. We'd also like to say welcome back to all those people that are returning subscribers. We thank you very much for your continual support, your continual comments and for liking these videos that we're putting out. We really enjoy doing them for you. So as I said today we're going to be showing you the features of our Victron charge controller. We'll be going out into the van, we'll be connecting our phone up and we'll be going through various different settings on the charge controller just to show you the different features that this, this charge controller has. We're really impressed with this charge controller and also the battery monitor that we've got as well. We're really pleased that we've gone for these particular models. The flexibility they give you, the stats that you can get out of them is really, really useful. So let's go and check that out in the van now. So we've now come out to the van and as you can see on our phone here, we've now connected into the smart solar charge controller. We can see that there's one device on here at the moment. Obviously we have the battery monitor on here as well, which when the battery's powered on would appear in the list. And to connect to it, all we're using is we've just got a Bluetooth connection that's set up between our phone and the charge controller. You can have multiple devices connected into the charge controller. So if you've got multiple phones, multiple devices, you can have those connected in as well. But to do all we do is we just select the charge controller. And then it takes a little bit of time to connect. Now what it's doing while it's connecting like this, it's checking from our internet connection whether we've got an update, so it's using the internet connection of my phone, to check whether I've got any updates that need to be downloaded onto the charge controller itself. These updates just give you a few more features. They might have made some improvements to iron out any bugs that are on the device. So what can we see here on the screen? So at the moment, we can see that we're pulling in two watts of solar power from the panels. It's a very cloudy, wet day here at the moment, so we're getting very, very little power coming in from the panels. And we also don't have any draw running in the van at the moment either, so we're not getting any, any pull down into the batteries. Our batteries are also pretty well charged at the moment, as you can see on here. They're running at 13.8 volts, flicking between 8.6 and 8.7 volts. So therefore we don't need to put any charge into the batteries, they're just set on a float charge at the moment which is a, just a very mi minimal charge going into the battery, so therefore it's not having to use the panel that much. But this is the main screen of the charge controller, and as you can see here we're actually getting 37.5 volts coming in from the panels, and we've got a current of 0.1 amps. Obviously we're not charging the batteries at the moment, we're not doing anything particularly powerful with the batteries, so therefore we don't need to put any draw in, we don't need to put any charge into the battery. So the top part of this screen here shows the solar charge controller inputs, and then we've got the battery voltage, the current current, and also the state that the charge controller is in. Now this charge controller has three different states. It has a float, it has a bulk, and it has absorption. What do these three different ones mean? So float is where your batteries are fully charged, and all it's doing is just putting a minimal charge into the battery itself, just to keep it topped up and just to keep those batteries healthy. Batteries like to have a constant charge going into them, they like to be stimulated, they just like to have that little bit of trickle charge going in. So that's what the, the, the panels are currently doing, is they're just keeping that battery ticking over. Bulk mode is when you've had draw coming out of your batteries, or you've been out of a solar or overnight, and you've been using power within the battery. Your battery voltage is down a little bit. It will then go into a bulk mode, which will heavily charge the batteries, drawing as much power as it possibly can out of the solar panels. So that's the main screen and this is the main screen that always comes up when you first go into the app. What we really like about this app is that you have this history tab up here at the top and if we tap this, what this will show you is this will show you over a history period. So we can go back here, we can go back all the way. As you can see the solar charge controller has been running for quite a while in the van. So we can go back up to 30 days history. And to see what's happened with the panel, how much power we've been putting into the batteries, how much we've been drawing down from the sun, and then the various different stages that that charge has been in. So as you can see here, 30 days ago, we pulled in just over 50 watt hours. A large percentage of that was in your float mode. 
You've then got your bulk charge, which is the white area, and then the little gray area in the middle is your absorption layer. As you can see, regardless of whether there's been any draw out from the battery on a particular day, it will go through the particular stages of the battery just to keep it topped up. As you can see, 24 days ago, we were just in pure bulk mode. Obviously, it wasn't a very sunny day, so we didn't get much charge coming in from the batteries on that day. You also get to see the total number of kilowatt hours that you've drawn in since it's either been last cleared or total over the 30 days. And you can go in, you can drill down uh, nice and easily to see how, how efficient your solar panels are being. So what do we see? So let's go back to today. So what we can see, uh, let's have a look at two days ago. So we've got a little bit more information on there. So as you can see, from a yield from our solar panels, we had 30 watt hours of energy. We had 39 watts of energy come into the batteries and a max voltage of 45 volts. Obviously, this voltage is going to depend on how sunny a day it is. So you can see it varies around 45, 44 volts. And also what you're doing in the van. The van at the moment has just been sat on our drive. We haven't been using many appliances inside it. So it's just keeping those batteries topped up so we're not pulling too many volts down from the, the panel itself. You can also see the state of the battery. So the second line just here, you can see the battery and you can see what the minimum and maximum voltage was on each day. Obviously it goes up, up and down throughout the day as it's doing different battery cycles in here as well. And also you've got a section at the bottom where happily we're not seeing any errors in our charge controller. If the charge controller is throwing any errors, we, we, we would see those here. You can also click on each of the individual bars and it gives you a little bit more power, a little bit more information as to what's happening within that particular bar. So you can see for today, we've had six hours and 49 minutes, 89% of the time it's been in float mode. We've had one minute of absorption and 50 minutes of bulk charge. So this is just where the battery is just going through its different cycles throughout the day. So that's a really handy little feature. And you can do that going back through all of the days. You can drill down into that nice, nice level of information. You also have the option to clear your history. If you want to go through and clear it, you can just use this little clear history mode up in the top. But we want to keep our history. We're quite well looking at it. And you also have the ability to share that as well. So you can share that on your various different platforms. If you want to share it with someone over a message, over an email, over Twitter, or if you just want to put it into Instagram just to show everyone how your charge is going, you can do that as well. Settings on the back on this charge controller. There's various different settings on here We've only used a couple of them so far So what we've done is you can change you can go in and you can initially set up your charge controller Obviously, we're running 12 volt batteries the maximum charge current we can get is 50 amps That's what this charge controller can handle one feature that we have used and is very handy is the charger enabled toggle switch what this allows you to do is if you're doing any work on the uh, battery side of your charge controller you can trigger this little switch here and basically what that will do is that will then take the charge controller out of charge mode so you're not putting any power into the battery and you're not going to damage yourself and you don't have any uh, risk of electrocution from from doing that you can also see that the different settings for the battery uh, we've got this set to the position 2, which is uh, deep discharge leisure batteries, which is what we're using. You can go through and you can set up various different battery presets, dependent on the type of the battery, but it is pretty good at deciding when it's connected into the batteries which one to do. There's also this handy streetlight function with inside the charge controller, and what this allows you to do is you can turn this on, and what you can do is you can set a nightlight function, you can put in different times, to at sunrise and sunset to do different actions. So for example, at sunset, you can decide to switch on lights for a fixed period of time, switch on until midnight or switch on until sunrise. You can also do at sunrise what you want to do. You can say switch off before sunrise. This is obviously based on the time to the chat that are in the charge controller obviously as it connects into the internet it will download the latest times it will know what time it currently is and therefore it will allow these lights to come on and off really handy little function we haven't set anything up on here yet we may do on the van it may be quite handy to have a little night light on outside the van at some periods of time and we can go in and use this street light function here as well you also have the option to download these settings, so you can import a settings file, you can save them off, so you can click the little save icon, you can save the settings to a file, store this somewhere safe, 
So it just means that if you ever lost, if you've set this up as, as you want it, you can save this off to a cloud storage uh, or anywhere else you want to save it, just in case you need to reload on those onto a new device, or if this device decides to reset itself somehow. Again, you also have the option to share from here as well. You can share out to your various different social media platforms here as well. You can also just go in and get your product info. You can click on here. It tells you the current firmware version you're working on. You can get your serial number and also the different firmware updates. If you wanted to do a manual firmware update, you can do that through here as well. But like I said, every time it connects, if you're connecting it into your phone and your phone has a signal, uh, a mobile signal, it will go and check whether there's an, an update available for the particular device. So we've now gone and turned the power on in the van and as you can see we now have another device on our device list which is our battery monitor. So what this allows us to do, let's select to this one and again this does exactly the same as the charge controller. It will go and check to see whether there's an update. My phone's got mobile signal so it will go and check to see if there's an update available. And then what this allows you to do is this allows you to drill down quite a bit more into the state of the batteries themselves. We've also gone in and we've just enabled a few things in the van. You may be able to hit the fan running in the background. We've also got some lighting on in the van and we've got our inverter running as well. So we've got a little bit of draw coming out of the batteries. And as you can see at the moment, we're currently pulling four and a half amps away from the battery and 59 watts of charge out of here as well. So if the solar panels were able to top this back up, if the sun was out a little bit more, then obviously the solar panels will be com compensating for this loss and putting that power back into the battery. You've also got uh, various other bits of information on this screen. You can see that current state of charge of the batteries is 100%. You've also got a handy little feature called time remaining. This is based on the current draw from the batteries, how much time you have left on the batteries before they're discharged and they need charging up. Obviously when the sun comes out, and you're putting charge into the batteries, obviously it's charging the batteries at the same time. But this is just saying in its current state, we've got about three days worth of charge coming out of the batteries. You've also, again, just like you have with your uh, solar charge controller, you do have the history in here. We don't have a lot of history on this device, as this is off most of the time at the moment, while we've got the ledger batteries just switched off. We're not putting any draw out from them. But you can still see in here, so you can see the time since last full charge was 8 minutes and 31. We've just been running a few devices on here for the last couple of minutes. Obviously the draw is coming out as soon as the sun comes back out, starts charging this back up. One of the things that we really like about this battery monitor is this alarm section. What this allows you to do is it allows you to go and set an audible alarm for your batteries so that you can be alerted to various different things. So what do we have set up here? What we have is the first one is this low state of charge alarm. Basically what this will do is this will sound a buzzer when your battery hits 50% charge. Lead AGM batteries don't like going below 50%. You can actually damage the battery quite considerably if you let the charge drop below 50%. So we've got an alarm set up on here at 50% just to alert us that we probably need to turn some things off in the van or plug in or try and increase the solar values so that we can get some charge back into the van. And the alarm will stop going off when the battery goes up above 51%. So that's a really handy alarm, really nice little feature. Other two that we've got in here, we've got a low voltage alarm. So this is where the voltage of the battery drops below a certain point. So we've set this at 11 and a half volts and then it will clear itself when it goes back up to 12.3 volts again. Really handy, another nice little handy alarm so you don't have to keep watching your, your battery monitors, you can get audible alerts. And then similarly we've got a high voltage alarm on here as well, it's set at 16 volts. Obviously this is a 12 volt battery. When you're, when you're charging them, both through 240 volts and sometimes through solar, depending on how sunny it is, you can see some quite high voltages in going into these batteries. We've seen 14.5, 14.7 volts going into a 12 volt battery. This is normal. Obviously, you don't want it to go much above that, so this order bill alarm will just give you a, a warning to say that you need to check something out on the system. Obviously, there's an issue or there's an error somewhere, so you can set that up. If you have a, your starter battery connected into this as well, you can set these alarms on the starter battery. We don't have that at the moment, but it is something that we're considering doing, just running some cables down to our starter battery so that the solar panels will keep that topped up as well. That's another really handy feature. 
You've also got various different settings here for the display, so you can change backlight intensity, you can say that the backlight is always on, we don't want that feature. Battery monitor is going to be mounted inside the cab of the van, so we don't want that blue light on, especially at night. You can set scroll speeds, and then you can say what different element you want in your menu as you're scrolling up through on the device itself. Obviously if there's some of these that you aren't interested in then you can turn these off so that you've only got certain menus to go through. Another little really handy little customization feature. We haven't turned any of these off yet because we're using all of the different displays. We're just learning how this works. So this is a really nice handy just one just to have everything on. So as I said, we're really pleased with the choice that we made on our charge controller and on our battery monitor. They're not the cheapest devices out there. We feel it's worthwhile paying the money for these devices as ultimately it's what's giving you the power in the van. And without power, there's not really a lot you can do. You can't have any lighting. You can't have any other devices connected in. And it makes the whole living off-grid experience quite miserable. So we're really pleased that we've gone for these devices. Obviously, there are various other brands out there Go and do away and do your research on the different models, the different features that they have, but we can really recommend these Victron charge controllers. We'll put a link in the description below to where we bought these from. Go check them out. There's various different sizes, different models for the different power needs that you've got. So remember to check out those, just make sure you're picking the right one for your needs. So that's it for another video, another week. Thank you very much for everyone that's tuned in again this week. We really appreciate it. And remember, for all those people that haven't, don't already know, we do put up a video every Sunday. So check back in next week for our next new video. Until then, have a good week. See you, bye.